The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12136 in the name of Linda Fabiani on Marie Curie's 2015 Great Daffodil Appeal. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to participate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Linda Fabiani to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It's actually quite pleasant after the two contentious debates we've had this afternoon where no agreement was reached that we were talking about a subject this evening that everyone, I would think, would be in absolute accord with, which is um, about recognising the great work that is done by the charity that is Marie Curie and to welcome the 2015 Great Daffodil Appeal. Um, it's a great pleasure to me as well um, to, to be given the, the privilege of running this debate uh, because I'm such a huge supporter of the work that's carried out. And this year, again, um, in March, we have the Daffodil Appeal. And what's fascinating is just how much money that makes. It's really caught the public imagination. We're all going about with, with daffodils, and there's a, a host of golden daffodils sitting up in the public gallery. Um, I'm sure they haven't just wandered in off the street. I'm pretty certain that that's our, um, that uh, these people up there are our volunteers, and I'm looking forward to welcoming them all later at the reception, and I hope that that colleagues can come along to that as well. And you should know, um, since it first started in 1986, the appeal has raised more than £80 million across the UK. So it's a very, very worthwhile annual initiative. And um, 30,000 hours of nursing care and emotional support um, was given by the money we raised in Scotland in 2014. So, so worthwhile. Everyone knows, I think, what Marie Curie does. Expert care, emotional support, research and guidance, helper service, the information service, bereavement support. But when I say that, I deliberately left out the word cancer because people automatically assume that Marie Curie and the services are all about cancer. And of course, a large part of that is the case. Uh, you know, we all know um, just how many people get affected by cancer in life. But what a lot of people don't realise is that the Marie Curie nurses and the Marie Curie service um, is for any kind of terminal illness. And people with all different kinds of conditions and troubles are helped by Marie Curie. They've come out with a new five-year strategy. Um, and part of it is trying to raise the awareness of exactly what Marie Curie do. And it sets out how to reach more people living with that terminal illness and uh, offering the vital care and support. So it's about new services. It's about caring for more people through the services and hospices, research, development of health policy, and investing significantly in the infrastructure so that that care and support can be more extensive, both indirectly and directly. There's key issues relating to terminal illnesses in Scotland and I, it seems to me that ever since the very early days of this parliament, Marie Curie in um, lobbying in the best sense members in this parliament have spoken about the issues relating to dying in Scotland. I remember one of the very first campaigns that got me aware was the campaign on the right to die at home. And that campaign is ongoing. It's so very, very important. Um, the figures here, I don't want to dwell on all these figures, but over 54,000 people die in Scotland every year. And of course, you know, that will rise. Um, close to 60% of people die in hospital, yet the vast majority of people would prefer to die at home. So that Marie Curie campaign is ongoing. And, you know, I think it's, again, something that we should all bear in mind. Surely, if people want to die at home, they should be given all the support necessary uh, to allow that palliative care to be given. And after all, um, we do have a, an ageing population. And it would seem that quite often there's inequality in accessing that palliative care that's necessary of the type that the suffering person wishes of the type that the family wishes to, because support's not just given to the person who requires the palliative care, it's wider than that. 
support is given to the family and friends of that person as well. So, um, the Scottish Government has committed to publishing a new strategy, a national framework for action. Um, it's interesting to see that, and it would, it would be good if that could really address the inequities of care across diseases and settings and try and get a clear picture of what's required, the publication of data, and really set out a plan to help people. The 2020 vision document, which has um, been generally agreed to be a good document and a good strategy and vision to be aiming for, the government document, there's no reference to terminal illness, dying or death in this uh, 2020 vision document. And that plan is being refreshed, so I would ask again that the Minister take on board and back to her colleagues that that is considered because we do need honest and open conversations about death and dying and about tackling that taboo and uh, giving support to initiatives such as good life, good death, good grief. Because it is about support for carers, family members, really integrated, looking at the unit as a whole. In the short time we've got left, uh, presiding officer, one of the things I'm delighted about here this evening is that we do have so many volunteers here from right across the country who volunteer uh, for Marie Curie. Over 4,000 people in Scotland volunteer each year, collecting and raising funds, helping patients, acting as patrons and advisors, supporting services and hospices, or indeed uh, working in shops. Uh, I've got a group in East Kilbride that only started, I think, a few years ago. I don't know if they're here this evening. I hope they are. Um, it seems like they've been there forever, working away really, really hard. And uh, they're always sort of saying, you can come and do this, come and do that. But some of it seems really hard. And when you look through the Marie Curie book about all the things they're doing, marathons, treks, walking, oh, my goodness... I don't want to do anything like that. Can I say that if they're here? I quite fancy the tea party. <laughs> I certainly don't fancy standing in East Kilbride Shopping Centre with one of these big yellow top hats that my friend the Minister stood in last year, although I do understand that she did uh, help raise lots of funds there. So can I say um, directly on behalf of myself and all my colleagues, I think, even the ones who are not here, because people would like to be here, but have other things they must attend to, that we just want to say a massive thank you to those who volunteer on behalf of Marie Curie, because you do it on behalf of us, as you do for everyone else in the country. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, President. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate speeches of around four minutes, and I call Patricia Ferguson to be followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I congratulate Linda Fabiani for securing this debate and add my welcome to hers, to all of the volunteers and, I believe, some staff who are able to be with us for this evening's debate and reception. It was a great privilege for me to attend the official opening of the new Marie Curie Hospice in Springburn following its completion in 2010, because many of us who live in the north of the city have reason to be grateful for the work of the Marie Curie staff and for the services they provide both at the hospice and in the community. Last year alone, there were 1,076 new referrals to the Glasgow Hospice. But it occurred to me when I was researching for this debate that talking about 1,076, sorry, 1,076 referrals or 146 outpatients really wouldn't do justice to the approach of the Marie Curie staff. So I thought we should look at it perhaps in another way. And put simply, the Marie Curie organisation helps people at some of the most difficult times any family ever has to go through. Some people stay at the Marie Curie Centre and are looked after by a team of caring professionals who know exactly what is needed by that individual. This care includes help to manage pain, emotional and spiritual support, physiotherapy and complementary therapy, therapies. And those who don't need to stay in the hospice might access daycare, discuss their care needs or get help with their benefits. And of course, others were cared for in their own homes 
with support and care provided to them and to their loved ones. And for the next year at least, a new service will also be available, the Child and Young People's Bereavement Support Project. This project, funded by the Margot Young Foundation, will offer young people who have suffered a bereavement care and support. The foundation was established by Margot's son, Alan Young, because Margot sadly died when Alan was just 14, and he felt that he had little or no support at that time. This project is aimed at making the situation better for children who are bereaved in the future. It's an extremely important project, presiding officer, and a fitting tribute to Margot Young. But it's estimated that between 35 and 40,000 people who die each year could benefit from palliative care, but not everyone who needs it gets it. Indeed, eight out of 10 non-cancer patients with a terminal illness either don't get palliative care or access it very late in the development of their condition. And I think that point chimes with what Linda Fabiani was saying about Marie Curie perhaps being associated mostly with cancer. And perhaps it is that idea that palliative care is something that happens with cancer patients, which of course is not just the case. And I understand that the Scottish Government will publish a new strategy this, this spring, and that of course is to be welcomed. But if it is to be helpful, it must focus on addressing those inequalities of care that Linda Fabiani spoke about. It must look at the inequalities in care across diseases and ensure that data is collected in a way that allows progress to be tracked and adjustments to be made. Now, as we know, Marie Curie hospices care for people with a range of terminal illnesses, such as cancer, dementia, motor neuron disease, heart disease, and renal failure, to name but a few. And they do so with great care, great compassion and real professionalism. And the Marie Curie hospices are funded by a combination of NHS funding and generous donations from the public. And that is why we are celebrating Daffodil Week in this debate. I want to pay my own tribute to all of those who fundraise for Marie Curie. The people who organise the fets, arrange the dances, organise the marathons, the bingo nights and the bake sales, they all do a remarkable job. Last week, I had the opportunity to visit the Springburn Marie Curie shop. It's a lovely, bright and welcoming place. And it was truly inspiring to hear the manager, Caroline Costello, and her staff and volunteers talk so passionately about the, what they do and to see the excellent relationship they have with their customers. Presiding officer, the staff of the Marie Curie hospices do a marvellous job and we can never thank them enough. But I'm sure that they would be the first to say that they couldn't do their job without people like Caroline and her team of volunteers and staff and everyone who raises money during Daffodil Week and throughout the year. Let's hope, Presiding Officer, that this year's fundraising is successful and allows the staff of the Marie Curie Hospices to continue the great work they've been doing in communities like mine for over 60 years. Many thanks. I now call David Torrens to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank Linda Fabiani for bringing this motion to Parliament today, and I greatly appreciate this chance to speak about Marie Curie's great difficult appeal. I would also like to welcome representatives and volunteers from Marie Curie. Marie Curie is a charity like no other. In 2014, it supported 7,400 terminally ill people in Scotland, even in their homes or in one of Marie Curie's hospices in Edinburgh or Glasgow. Because of her hard work throughout the year, I think it is of great importance that we take time today to honour her achievements. Marie Curie aims to deliver the right care in the right place at the right time, um, to deliver the right care. The organisation is constantly working to improve services by involving patients and getting feedback from families who use their services. It has recently made one million available for research, which aims to enhance communications around terminal illness, prognosis and dying, bereavement and symptom control. Right place is often a patient's home, which is the environment which a terminally ill usually feel most comfortable. In 2012 survey, 81% of respondents stated that they would have preferred to die at home. However, only 23% were able to do so. Supporting these suffering from terminal illness is no easy task. Marie Curie takes pressure off carers and family members whilst aiming for high quality care. This is a time when it is crucial not only to help in relieving pain for those who are terminally ill, 
but ensure that they are providing quality of end of life care. The future will also bring great demands with people expected to live longer with more complex illnesses. Marie Curie is constantly working to enhance its services. Within the organisation's strategic plan, it aims to raise 20 million by 2020 and will invest substantial funds into research. The helper service, which provides terminally ill with companionship and emotional support, is now running in eight areas. Four more are projected in the future. Additionally, a new website, which is more easily accessible for patients, families and volunteers, was launched in December last year. Of course, one of Marie Curie's biggest success is the annual Great Daffodil Appeal. Last year, the countrywide campaign raised 8.26 million. The 2015 Daffodil Appeal will be even bigger. Marie Curie aims to raise 8.7 million, which will amount to an additional 500,000 compared to 2014. Considering that for every £20 collected, the organisation can provide one hour of nursing care to a patient, these numbers are tremendous. However, it is important to remember that Marie Curie's work and the Great Daffodil Appeal would not be possible without the dedicated help of many volunteers. This year, the organisation has itself a target of recruiting 26,000 voluntary staff. Collector recruitment already started in January through social media channels, and volunteers are now able to register online with the help of a new campaign management software. Today, I also want to extend particular gratitude to all Marie Curie volunteers in my constituency of Kirkcaldy and Fife. At the 2014 Great Daffodil Appeal, collectors from Perth, King Ross, Fife and Stilling raised an incredible £44,179, which allowed Marie Curie to care for 856 terminally ill in Mid-Scotland and Fife. Every March, it is my pleasure to join volunteers in their fundraising activities, and it is truly inspiring to see their tireless commitment. I am also looking forward to holding another tea party, as I did last year, to help raise funds for the organisation. In addition to this year's Great Daffodil Appeal, Marie Curie has been selected as a charity to benefit from the Swimathon, the world's biggest annual fundraising swimming event, which will take place in April. As of last week, 13,866 people have signed up throughout the UK to participate in this event. Earlier this year, I was fortunate to assist local Marie Curie fundraising coordinators in promoting the Swimathon, and I am positive that it will be a great success. Apart from these fantastic fundraising activities, the Helpers Programme, which was launched in 2014 by the Minister for Public Health in Fife, now offers additional services to patients and their family. Terminal ill people are visited several hours a week by a specially trained volunteer who offers one-to-one -one support ranging from helping with small tasks to making a cup of tea. Presiding officer, I have talked about Marie Curie's remarkable accomplishments in Scotland, including my local area. However, I want to raise awareness of the work that is still necessary in order to meet the challenge of the future. People will live longer. 1.2 million people will surpass 90 years of age by 2033, and the number of people, the number of people dying will increase by 5% over the next 15 years. Simultaneously, people will be faced with more complex illnesses. Cognizant to these statistics, I must, it must remain a priority to ensure everyone receives the care they deserve. Scotland, in partnership with organisations such as Marie Curie, needs to ensure that the terminally ill people, their families and loved ones, will continue to receive the care they deserve, and to use Marie Curie's words, deliver the right care, in the right place, at the right time. Lastly, I want to encourage all fellow Scots to wear a daffodil and show support for Marie Curie's invaluable services to our country. Many thanks. And I now call Jamie McGregor to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as a long-time patron of Marie Curie Cancer Care, I congratulate Linda Fabiani, Fabiani on securing today's debate, in which I'm delighted to participate. I well remember the fun I had a few years ago compiling a book of MSP's favourite recipes, which eventually raised some £18,000 for Marie Curie, and I never had any complaints about any of the recipes either, thank goodness. Um, I'm pleased that our Parliament is taking the opportunity to highlight this month's annual daffodil appeal, and I encourage constituents to support it and wear their daffodils with pride. The money raised in 2014 appeal funded over 30,000 hours of nursing care and emotional support. I have a collection box in my office if anyone still needs a daffodil. It's all, also right that we pay tribute to the excellent work undertaken by Mary Curie's staff in Scotland, nurses, doctors, hospice staff, campaigners, 
and policy staff and commend all those volunteers and fundraisers who are the bedrock of the charity. Marie Curie's dedicated and caring nurses offer invaluable practical and emotional support to so many of our terminally ill constituents across the country and to their families and to their friends. And in my region of the Highlands and Islands, in 2013 to 14, Marie Curie carried out 12,675 visits to 2,518 constituents with terminal illness. Their support ensured that the vast majority of terminally ill patients in the Highlands and Islands were able to die in the place of their choice. And I would obviously wish to support the charity so that it can help ensure every single patient is able to make that choice. And nurses in my region have the additional challenge of often covering very large geographical areas. Staff such as Marie Curie nurses Phyllis McCurdy, who does sterling work in Butte and Cowell, or Nadine Archibald from Strathy, who works across Caithness and Sutherland, regularly traveling 100 miles for a shift. They are an example to us all, and I'm delighted that in 2013 they both won a prestigious Peacock Nursing Award in the above and beyond category for always going that extra mile. Now, like other members, I too welcome Marie Curie's new strategy for 2014 to 19, which sets out plans to reach even more people living with a terminal illness. This strategy deserves the backing of all MSPs and the government. We need to face the reality that Marie Curie Cancer's care services are going to be needed ever more, more than ever in the future, as the number of people aged 75 and over is expected to increase by 86% by 2037. Now, in previous debates, like today's, I've referred to the extraordinary bravery of Marie Curie herself and, of course, her husband, who were pioneers in the world of radiation, sacrificing their own lives so that others could benefit from the scientific advances that they developed. And it's right that Marie Curie's name lives on through the charity. It also lives on in the EU's Marie Sklodowska Curie research funding, which I note, um, slightly to my horror, from a recent European Committee briefing, faces a cut of 100 million euros. But having checked with Marie Curie Cancer Care, I am relieved that this EU funding stream will not affect Marie Curie Cancer Care's vital funded research, but it does seem a retrograde step that the EU is cutting back on support of research when it is so important, not just to human health, but to the economy of the, of the EU. Our investment in cutting edge medical research is crucial if the EU wants to maintain competitiveness in the face of international challenges from India and the Far East. Um, now, in conclusion, presiding officer, I'm delighted to take part in today's debate, and I wish the great Daffodil Appeal a record success in 2015, and encourage everyone to give generously, to support the appeal, and back the world-class efforts of our Marie Curie nurses. Thank you. Many thanks. And can I now call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. And can I too uh, thank my good friend Linda Fabiani for securing uh, this debate and importantly thank her for bringing to my attention that there may somewhere on the internet be a picture of the minister dressed as a daffodil and I will certainly be uh, a way to look at YouTube uh, later on. Um, but the timing of this debate is obviously uh, very opportune. It allows us to acknowledge the phenomenal fundraising uh, effort uh, that goes in as part of the, the daffodil uh, appeal, which is so central uh, to allowing uh, Marie Curie to do what it does on behalf of those with terminal illness and indeed their, their families. Uh, I think the, the, the briefing from Marie Curie suggests that in 2014, uh, the money raised in Scotland uh, funded over 30,000 hours of nursing care and emotional uh, support. Uh, it's been said already, but uh, let me record my own personal uh, thanks to Marie Curie, uh, their staff uh, and volunteers, many of whom are in the gallery, although I have to say they all wandered in just as I was preparing to deliver my closing speech in the debate on mental health and for a moment there I thought I may have been more of a crowd puller uh, than I'm generally given credit.
credit for. Uh, but the work that they do nationally, regionally and locally, I think is something that really does uh, deserve uh, credit and our gratitude. Uh, colleagues will be aware uh, of my support for the assisted uh, dying bill. This came up in the previous debate in relation to mental health and I think it's worth putting on record again. I have always made clear that I do not see any contradiction between my support for that bill and my absolute commitment to ensuring that we invest properly and progressively in palliative care. It is not an either-or situation. I'm conscious that debates like this, we can cover a lot of the same ground, so let me hastily retreat to my constituency and, and uh, describe what is happening locally in Orkney, where Marie Curie is relatively uh, is a relatively recent uh, arrival the challenges they face uh, are I think significant there's an aging population as there is everywhere else but particularly so in the islands there's the complex illnesses and the complexity of delivering these sorts of services across a uh, um, dispersed island uh, population they're dealing with a challenge again uh, faced everywhere of perception where I think there still is a bit of a lag effect in understanding that this goes beyond um, simply the treatment of those uh, affected uh, by cancer. Uh, I'm delighted to see Dr Andy Trevitt uh, and the Stromness practice taking a lead delivering this alongside their colleagues in the Doombie practice through the West Mainland of Orkney. The patient numbers are relatively small but the impact already has been significant. The feedback from patients and their families uh, has been hugely positive to date. The support from the wider community, reflecting I think what we're seeing at a national level, has been unbelievable. Um, uh, last year, £21,000 was raised uh, in Orkney, representing more than uh, a pound for every man, woman and child in the uh, constituency. Um, major uh, contributors, uh, again, which I would want to acknowledge, be Giffy Leslie um, and the West End Hotel through the production of Sound of Music and indeed the Vintage Car Rally, but there are many and it's perhaps invidious to draw out just those two examples. But I think I would also want to record my thanks to the efforts of Barbara Todd. I had a missed call um, earlier during the, the debates this afternoon, which suggests she might not have been able to make it down uh, from Orkney, which I think would be uh, a real shame indeed. Her efforts uh, in supporting that group of volunteers uh, and making the case for rolling out uh, Marie Curie services in Orkney has been truly uh, phenomenal. Discussions are ongoing uh, with NHS Orkney about a possible rollout. I know this is not straightforward and, and the board will wish to be uh, reassured about the impact on, on other services. Uh, but I think um, the work that's already been done demonstrates the value and I would hope that progress can be made there. So in conclusion, Deputy President Officer, can I uh, congratulate Linda Fabiani once again, uh, offer my um, thanks and gratitude to uh, all the Marie Curie nurses, their staff uh, and of course their volunteers who I look forward to meeting later on this evening uh, at the, the, uh, the reception uh, and thank them for the truly wonderful work they do to allow people to die with dignity uh, and the place of their choice. Thank you very much indeed. Many thanks. And I now call Rhoda Grant to be followed by George Adam. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I too congratulate Linda Fabiani for securing um, this debate that marks the sta start of the great daffodil appeal and also pays tribute to the work of Marie Curie. Marie Curie Care provides care at home or in one of its hospices to more than 5,000 five and a half thousand patients suffering from terminal illnesses in Scotland. I've seen firsthand the wonderful work they do supporting family members and looking after, the term, looking after terminally ill relatives. And this is something that myself and my family are very, very grateful for. I want to use my time in the debate tonight to highlight the need for palliative care to be available and accessible to everyone with a terminal illness. Palliative care is not included in the Scottish Government's 2020 vision for health and it's important that we get that included as soon as possible because too many people are dying in hospital, almost 50% of them, um, which in many cases is an inappropriate place for them to die. And it's really sad that people who are in the last weeks or months of their lives are in, hos in a hospital ward when they should actually be at home or in a homely setting with their family and loved ones around them, living these last days to the full and savouring every minute. We also need to provide good quality palliative care throughout our communities, especially in rural areas. 
and it's difficult to access such care if you're away from core services unless a lot of thought is put out into how that can be delivered. And I know Marie Curie does support this ambition and also helps design rural services. It's important that services meet the, meet the needs of patients and are deliverable, deliverable where they live. It's also important to acknowledge the work of community nurses and GPs in remote communities because they're often at the forefront of delivering this type of care and in many cases work very hard to support people at home. However, it should not be delivered in a way that is dependent on the goodwill of those dedicated staff. They need flexi flexible backup to assist them provide, to provide those services and that's something that Marie Curie does provide. Research has shown that 65% of those suffering from a terminal illness would prefer to die in their own home, but only 25% do currently. Palliative care at home is often not seen as an option for many terminally ill patients. There is an urgent need to consider new and improved models of care, especially for those living in rural and scattered communities. All over Scotland, too many people are receiving palliative care packages far too late and usually within the last eight weeks, of, eight weeks of their lives. And as Patricia Ferguson said, as many as eight out of ten people who have a non-cancer terminal illness do not receive any palliative care at all. Marie Curie Care provides care to as many terminally ill people as possible. Therefore, we need to support the Great Daffodil Appeal and help them continue this valuable work. But we also need to work with them to design palliative care services in every community. We should aspire to deliver high-quality palliative care to everyone with a terminal illness. Many thanks. And I now call George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I thank Linda Fabiani for bringing this debate. And I recognise the great work of Marie Curie and uh, their volunteers, who we can see here in numbers tonight. I want to speak in this in a couple of reasons. One is a very personal one. Another one, if you indulge me, President Officer, is a very Paisley-centric reason. Because uh, when it comes to fundraising, nobody does it better. Let's see what I did there. That was quite good. Yes, no problem. Linda Fabiani. This is my debate, and it's East Kilbride that's up there tonight. George Adam. <laughs> Along with uh, the representatives from Scotland's largest town, Paisley, as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> can I say, presiding officer, my personal reasons for wanting to speak on it is my mum died of can a cancer-related illness a couple of years ago, and it maybe shows I am, a, but was I am, and will always be a bit of a mammy's boy. But traditionally, as we've already said, Marie Curie uh, supports families like mine. And they did in this case, because the whole idea was for my mum to have her last days in her space in the world, her house, her things, her family round about her. And unfortunately for us, things moved on a bit faster. But the fact that we had that opportunity and families get that opportunity to spend that time in their own wee place in the world, that makes all the difference. I'll never forget the conversation we had when the doctor said she was dying, they actually said, we said, Mum, you're dying. And the first thing she said was, when am I getting home, son? That's all she wanted to do was to go back to her place. But the support offered by charities like Marie Curie is obviously extremely important to families throughout Scotland. And uh, my, my, uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about here as well was I mentioned about the fundraising. It's about the people involved in the fundraising. Daffodil Days uh, or Week or the fundraising efforts is just one of the many things that happen throughout the country all the time. And only a couple of weeks ago, I actually uh, did a fire walk, presiding officer. So I walked over fire. I've not quite got as far as water yet, but fire's OK. Uh, but uh, what we did during that event was we actually seen everyone there together, all the people involved, people whose families had used the services of Marie Curie, raising funds and ensuring that they could make that difference to get that extra bit of money. Now, so far from that one event, there's been £9,000 uh, raised for that fire walk. I know the people from representatives of Marie Curie and Paisley are here probably to actually chase me up for 
my money because as of yet I haven't actually given them all so I will be getting round everyone here in this uh, chamber tonight to try and ensure that they uh, give me something for my sponsorship for the time that I spent walking on fire because it was quite difficult. One of the things they actually said which was quite funny was in the event was uh, the guy that did the event said George he said you could tell you've done it before he says because you started taking your time as you walked over fire that's quite dangerous don't do that again so <laughs> but uh, it just shows you all the fun events that are done throughout the country and the money it's raised you know I say that the, this uh, Marie Curie politics, everything is about people. It's about people raising funds for their charities, about people uh, using the Marie uh, Curie services and people becoming aware of the many issues that are involved. It's people like Lynn Wilson, Julie Maguire and Jane Evanson Paisley who are a part of that group who have only been going since August 2012 and have already raised £47,000 for this charity. Now that shows you the level of commitment that people who have, yes some of them had to have had members of their family who have had to use the services but that shows you the commitment and what people want to do to give back at this time of need as well and I think one of the important things that uh, Marie Curie bring up in the briefing paper was that we have to discuss as a nation how we deal with palliative care and how we actually talk about death you know how we and when it comes to that very difficult time when someone tells you that a member of your family is uh, terminally ill we have to actually have that discussion and see what we do because it's okay for me to sit here and say you know my mum's first thing was just to get back home but we have to make sure she was almost kidding herself on that it wasn't true it wasn't happening we have to deal with all that and make sure that we have the support mechanisms there like Marie Curie and others for families to be able to do that so I'm quite happy to congratulate Marie Curie on uh, all their efforts that they've been doing and I'm very proud to be debating this here today and I'm also very proud of my colleagues from Paisley who have raised so much money and are so committed to this cause. Many thanks. Can I now invite uh, Maureen Watt to respond to the debate minister in around seven minutes, please? Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer, and I'm pleased to be closing this uh, very interesting and uh, light-hearted in parts debate. Can I thank Linda Fabiani for bringing it to the chamber this evening and for Marie Curie for having um, the stall in the members' lobby and indeed for the reception later on this evening to allow MSPs to learn more uh, about the work that they do. And I'd like to add my welcome to uh, the people in the gallery this evening from Marie Curie Cancer Care, who, such, who play such a pivotal role in all the community settings across Scotland, working in partnership with people and their families in the final stages of their lives to provide person-centred, safe and effective care. For Marie Curie, events such as the Great Daffodil Appeal are key to fundraising, to raising funds, and a major part this month uh, of March is, uh, is their Daffodil Appeal, to raise funds to continue to provide that care for families across Scotland who need support at a very difficult time. And of course, Marie Curie is the major, uh, the, the Daffodil Appeal is the major part of their fundraising. But as Jamie um, McGregor reminded us, I'd forgotten that, I hadn't forgotten the recipe book, but I had forgotten that the funds were uh, raised for uh, Marie Curie. And I hadn't known that uh, George Adam had been uh, firewalking to raise funds for Marie Curie. And I note that one of the other fundraising events is Trek Cambodia. Um, I noticed Linda hasn't asked me to join her. Uh, on that, but maybe it's because Georgia Adam is going to undertake that as his next uh, uh, fundraising event. So I'd like to thank the thousands of volunteers across Scotland who raise uh, funds. I was in Stob Hill Hospital um, on Monday of this week, and there in the foyer um, there were uh, some grandparents with their grandchildren uh, badgering people uh, for funds. So it's all people across Scotland who um, raise funds and all members have taken the opportunity to mention um, the fundraising and services in their own constituency. And I would like to recognise my local fundraiser, Caroline Sneddon, who's the community fundraiser for Marie Curie in the office based in Aberdeen, who did badger me, as Linda Fabiani said, to spend an afternoon fundraising at Asda in Portlethen. And we raised a fair amount of money for that afternoon's work. 
And yes, I will send uh, Liam MacArthur the link to show me uh, in my daffodil hat at that event. As Linda Fabiani mentioned, the Scottish Government's 2020 vision for health and social care uh, will ensure that the, uh, the Scottish Government's commitment to high quality palliative and end of life care for all, and it's clear <coughs> for all, <coughs> the need for a clear shared vision on the future of palliative care and end of life care is widely agreed by all the stakeholders, the Scottish Government, NHS boards, and the range of stakeholders uh, in end of life and palliative care. Moving forward, we have established a new national advisory structure, refreshed stakeholder engagement, and detailed plans to support our commitment to publish a strategic framework for action. This will focus on future priorities to ensure high quality palliative and end of life care for everyone in Scotland linked more clearly to our 2020 vision for health and social care and reflect our commitment to quality measurement and improvement. It's for this reason that we have agreed to the National Advisory Group's request to extend the process in support of our strategic framework for action, allowing for a further focused period of dialogue and consultation and a final framework being approved by the end of this year. We want to achieve improvement by working with people. We want to develop services which are founded on a joint agreement about what is needed. And it is important that the people of Scotland understand where we're going and why. That's why the Scottish Government is dedicated to working with clinical and care professionals and the third sector and people with direct experience, like people in Marie Curie Cancer Care, of the issue, who have direct experience of the issues that matter most when time becomes shorter due to a diagnosis of an incurable condition. The Strategic Framework for Action will provide a concrete plat platform which will focus on palliative and end-of-life care and which will also create the settings for continuous improvement. The Scottish Government's ambition is to ensure that all services are co-produced with the communities they serve build on people's assets and support the health and well-being of the whole person and their family. And Patricia Ferguson was right to mention uh, the children and young person support services, which is so crucially needed uh, by many families. I'm glad to see that there is that in Glasgow and it needs to be uh, rolled out and available throughout um, Scotland. I should also mention the integration of health and so social care and the legislative changes which we have introduced with regards to the integration of health and social care set in place a new framework of how services are organised and this will be central to the provision of palliative and end-of-life care. We're working closely with acute and community health services, social work services and the third sector including Marie Curie, to ensure that we get the best, get the right balance for the provision of palliative and end-of-life care. In taking forward this ambitious approach, presiding officer, we fully recognise that we need to address the taboo that exists in Scotland about discussing the issues around death and dying. We are supportive of the good work being undertaken around people being able to talk about death and dealing with related issues in a constructive way and not simply avoiding the difficult conversations. Achieving this vision will prevent unnecessary suffering and financial and practical complications associated with dying intestate, for example, the absence, the absence of advanced care planning leading to inappropriate admissions, futile, futile and distressing medical interventions, the isolation of the very ill and bereaved when people are uncomfortable about what to say. <clears throat> So we recognise that most people want to plan care to support them to be at home with their families at the end of their lives. Anticipatory care planning is now central to health and care in Scotland and growing through its inclusion within new quality indicators in the GP con contract. So in working together with organisations like Marie Curie, we have made great progress in the provision of palliative and end-of-life care. However, we can't be complacent and we recognise that more needs to be done. 
we remain committed to delivering high-quality palliative end-of-life care in Scotland. I'm sure the daffodil appeal this year will be an even greater success than last year and that Marie Curie Services will continue to work with us in partnership to ensure that anyone who requires it gets the, the high-quality end-of-life care, something I'm sure that everyone in this chamber agrees with, something which is not only required but truly deserved. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Linda Fabiani's debate on Marie Curie's 2015 Great Daffodil Appeal. And I now close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>